Hey, what's up, pilots? This is Nick from Part Time Pilot. Today, we're going to talk about METARs and TAFs. So, let's get right to it. So, first, we're going to start off right here KDDC. This is the first part of the METAR TAF, and this is the airport name or ICAO identifier. Following that, you're going to see the date and the time. Right here, you see six digits followed by a Z. So, this you may see the 2017 and think 2017, but the first two digits are actually the day of the month, and the last four digits is the time in Zulu. So this is the 20th day of the month at 1752 Zulu. So this, the METAR assumes you know what month it is. <laughs> so next we see an auto. This means automatic reporting, and there's no human supervision for the weather report. The next is you're gonna see a group of numbers and letters and this is the wind the first three digits are going to be the wind direction relative to true north so this di wind direction is zero five zero uh, relative to true north the next two digits are going to be the wind speed in knots so the wind on this one is from zero five zero at 19 knots then you'll see a g following you won't always see g but if the wind is gusting you will see a g so this says the wind can gust up to 34 knots. So the wind is 050 at 19 knots, gusting to 34 knots. Next up is you're gonna see the visibility in statute miles. So this is one and a half statute miles of visibility. Next up, you're gonna see weather. So this could be a multiple things. In this specific example, it's two different items first you're gonna see a plus sign followed by ra and there's a whole chart which i have posted on my instagram a chart of all the different weather symbols and what they mean so ra means rain and then a plus sign means heavy rain if it was a minus sign it'd mean light rain and then nothing would mean moderate rain so this is heavy rain and then the br stands for mist so you just you're gonna have to get one of these tables again it's on my instagram at part period time period pilot that has a list comprehensive list of what all these weather items mean the next thing after the weather is going to be the sky conditions so this is the cloud type and level in hundreds of feet so the first one is sct006 this is scattered clouds at 006 or 600 feet so remember the numbers are in hundreds of feet so you add two zeros so that's so 006 is 600. Next is broken cloud layer at 1010 one, and add two zeros to that makes it a thousand feet. So broken at a thousand feet. And then the third one is overcast at 070, add two zeros to that and you get 7,000. So overcast at 7,000. Next up, you're gonna have uh, the temperature and dew point. So the first part, the first two digits is gonna be the temperature and then the second two are going to be the dew point. So this says, and these are in Celsius, so it says the temperature is 8 degrees and the dew point is 7 degrees. So obviously, you know, that when the temperature reaches the dew point, you're going to have saturation in the air. So if there was an M in front of either one of these letters, so let's say it said M08 and M07, then this would mean that the te temperatures are negative Celsius, so that would be minus negative 8 Celsius. Next up we have the altimeter setting and you can recognize this because it starts with an A followed by four digits. So this is in inches of mercury so it's pretty easy. This is just the altimeter setting is 29.85. Next up you're gonna have we have an RMK. Now this signifies the start of the remarks section. So the first two you're gonna see A02. This is the station equipment code. So A02 means station has precipitation sensor. The station, the equipment at this particular station gives you an idea of how detailed the METAR can be. Okay, so next box is gonna be PK space WND space five digits forward slash four digits. Now this is the peak wind direction, speed, and time. So the first five digits are wind direction and speed just as you saw them in the METAR so the first three digits of the direction last two digits is speed so that says wind is at 070 at 35 knots 
And then after the forward slash, the four digits is the time. So at 1731 Zulu, there was a peak wind of 35 knots. So going on to this next box, LTG DSNT E-S. The DSNT basically means distant. So you can think distant weather. Basically means there's a significant weather phenomenon greater than 10 statute miles from station. So it's not in the exact vicinity of the station, but it is close and it is a significant weather. And then LTG means lightning and E-S is direction from the station. So this whole thing states that lightning is greater than 10 statute miles in the distance from the station in the east and south direction. All right, next up we have SLP 103. So when you see SLP, this means a sea level pressure. Uh, and then you just got to remember the units, it's hectapascals. In this particular example, we have 1,010.3 hectapascals. And then <laughs> it's going to be real confusing, doesn't it? But basically what you, a quick way to convert is you add 10,000. So add 10,000 to 103. So that's 10,103. And then divide by 10. Basically move the decimal one to the left. So we have 103 plus 10,000 equals 10,103. Divide that by 10, you get 1,010.3 hectopascals for the sea level pressure. Next up, we're gonna have a P followed by four digits. So whenever you see this, this is the hourly precipitation amount in hundreds of an inch. So that's what the P signifies, the hour, hourly precipitation amount, hundreds of an inch. So this example, zero, zero, P0029 zero, zero, means 0.29 inches of rain in the last hour. Okay, the next one we're gonna see is six followed by four digits. Now the six, means a six hour precipitation amount in hundreds of an inch. So this one says 1.53 inches of rain in the last six hours. Okay, next up you're gonna see T followed by eight digits. Now, again, this is something you're not gonna remember, so you're gonna wanna write it down on a cheat sheet. But this is the hourly temperature and dew point to the nearest tenth of a degree Celsius. So this is the temperature and dew point just in a little more detail. So up here, we saw a temperature and dew point rounded to the nearest degree. So this was the temperature of eight degrees, dew point of seven degrees. Now here, the first four digits relate to temperature and the second four to dew point. So the first digit of the temperature for this zero right here, it's going to either be a zero or a one. Okay, now if it's a zero, then that means the temperature is above zero degrees Celsius, so it's a positive temperature. And if it's one, then that means it's a negative temperature. And same goes for the fifth digit, which is this zero right here for the dew point. So the, both these temperatures are positive to nearest tenth of a degree Celsius. So we know it's 8.3, positive 8.3 Celsius and positive 6.7 degrees Celsius for the dew point, which were rounded again here to eight and seven. Okay, so now we have our final three boxes. We'll start with the first box. Now these final three boxes are gonna start with a number one through nine, and then they're gonna be followed by four digits. So this first box, we have a one followed by four digits. Now the one signifies, this is gonna tell you the highest temperature during this six hour period. So how do you know what six hour period it is? Well, there's four six hour periods through the day. 000 Zulu to 0600 Zulu, 0600 to 1200, 1200 to 1800. So we know that it's 1752 Zulu. So we know we're in the 1200 to 1800 Zulu time frame. So the one signifies highest temperature in the six hour period, 12 to 1800. The second digit is either zero or one. Zero if the temperature is positive, one if the temperature is negative, and then the last three digits are the temperature in tenth of a degree. So. 111, move the decimal one to the left, that's 11.1 .1 degrees Celsius during the temp. So the highest temperature between 12 and 1800 Zulu was 11.1 .1 degrees Celsius. Okay, so the next box is gonna start with a two followed by four digits. Now the two signifies the lowest temperature in this six hour period. So again, the zero, the next, the second digit is either a zero or one. Here we see a zero, so we know that it's a positive temperature. And then the temperature is in tenth of a degree, so we move the decimal one to the left, so 072 becomes 07.2. So the lowest temperature in that six hour period is 7.2 degrees. 
Now finally we have our third box here. For this example is a five followed by four digits. Now the five signifies pressure tendency. Now I showed this one because the pressure tendency, basically you need a whole other diagram and box to tell you what this means. You're not gonna be able to remember it all, most likely. So the second digit can be zero through eight. And this tells you the pressure ten tendency in the last three hours. And then the last three digits is the amount of pressure change. So let's see what we mean. So we had an eight. So we know the atmospheric pressure now lower than three hours ago, and it's steady or increasing than decreasing, or decreasing than decreasing more rapidly. So we know that the pressure is going down, and we know the last three digits tell us by how much. All right, so now I mentioned a weather pattern, or sorry, the weather abbreviations now so this is the table I was talking about in our example we saw an RA we saw a plus RA so heavy rain and then we also saw BR where is BR which is missed um, and so as you can see it's good to have a table like this that you can always access you got things like low drifting shallow fog smoke Obviously not all these are intuitive, so it's good to have a table like this. I also have a table that talks about the sky conditions, the visibility, the winds, modifier, dew point examples, and then some remark examples. And this can be found on my Instagram, at part period time period pilot, along with a ton of other stuff. So check it out, give me a follow, and comment below if you have any questions. All right, thanks.